Wie ist es eigentlich, in der Natur zu leben, sein eigenes Essen anzubauen, sich selbst zu versorgen, sein eigenes Haus bauen zu können oder andere Konstruktionen? Bescheid zu wissen, wie funktioniert es mit dem Wachstum der Pflanzen, der Bäume? Wie funktioniert es mit den Tieren, mit den kleinsten Insekten oder mit den größeren? Wie hängt alles miteinander zusammen? Das sind so Themen, die mich schon seit einiger Zeit interessieren und ähm, deswegen hatte ich auch vor einigen Jahren schon einen Permaculture Design Kurs gemacht und wollte nun ein bisschen mehr in die Praxis gehen und ähm, das ein bisschen mehr in mein Leben integrieren, ein bisschen mehr darüber zu erfahren. Und deshalb habe ich jetzt diese Projekte hier gemacht in, in Südfrankreich und Spanien und war viel in der Natur unterwegs, habe eine Menge gelernt, zum einen handwerklich, ähm, auch wie man mit Werkzeugen oder Maschinen umgeht, Gartenarbeit, wie man zum Beispiel einen Forest Garden anlegt, das plant und durchführt und ähm, auch wie man in äh, Gemeinschaft mit anderen Leuten lebt, in der Community. Und das, das sind alles ganz spannende und interessante Erfahrungen, weil man doch sehr schnell aus seiner Komfortzone, aus der Bequemlichkeit herauskommt. Und dann merkt man schon ganz schnell auch, ähm, was, was, was einen so antreibt, was, was, was eigentlich der Wunsch wirklich ist. Ist es wirklich, dass man in Harmonie mit der Natur leben möchte und nachhaltiger und die Dinge wirklich angehen möchte oder ist es nur eher so ein Gefühl, das man ha haben möchte, dass man das Richtige tut. Und für mich ein Grund war auf jeden Fall ähm, auch die Dinge kennenzulernen, wie funktioniert es auch in der Natur, ähm, zu lernen, die Dinge auch machen zu können, Glauben daran zu entwickeln, dass man es das selber mal machen kann, weil man sieht ja den Lebensstil von anderen, ähm, dass es möglich ist. Und auch, auch, auch quasi selber zu lernen und, 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 und Fähigkeiten zu entwickeln. Und auf der anderen Seite auch viel in der Natur zu sein, weil ähm, ich das Gefühl habe, man, man ist besser mit sich selber verbunden, man, man kann besser fühlen, sein, seine Gefühle wahrnehmen. Und, und man hat auch Zeit zum Reflektieren über das, was passiert oder was passiert ist, auch in den letzten Jahren. Und ähm, wie gesagt, es geht für mich ums Lernen, aber auch nicht nur praktische Sachen, sondern auch auf, der, auf einer spirituellen Ebene auf jeden Fall. Für mich ist da die Beziehung zu Gott ganz wichtig, ähm, zu lernen, von ihm zu lernen, über Liebe, Wahrheit und wie alles funktioniert letztendlich und wie man selber funktioniert. Ähm, für mich persönlich stoße ich da ganz schnell auf Widerstände auch und man ist, äh, ist seinen Ängsten ausgesetzt auch teilweise und, ähm, und wie gesagt kommt raus aus so einer Komfortzone. Ja, also zum Leben in der Stadt habe ich auch das Gefühl, man weiß ja gar nicht, wie funktioniert es, woher kommt das Essen eigentlich? Und man geht in den Supermarkt und kauft es und dann ist man auf der Farm oder auf der Finca und sieht, wie, wie lange braucht es, bis, bis, bis was wächst irgendwie. Ne? So, ein, so ein Apfel oder, oder man sieht Kartoffeln und dann ist man vielleicht zwei Monate auf einem Projekt und sieht die Kartoffeln nicht. <lacht> Weil es braucht halt so seine Zeit und es sind so viele Kleinigkeiten, die einem gar nicht so bewusst sind irgendwie, die man im Alltag als alltäglich nimmt irgendwie oder wo man einfach nur so drüber hinweg geht und auch vielleicht gar nicht so die Dankbarkeit dafür hat und von daher ist es schon ganz, eine ganz, ganz schöne Erfahrung zu machen, zu sehen, dass, dass es doch alles auch seine Zeit braucht und dass es Leute gibt, die arbeiten und dafür sorgen, dass es, dass, dass, dass es funktioniert, dass man ein Haus hat und dass man, dass man Essen hat. Besonders in unserer Gesellschaft ist es ja auch so, dass diese Jobs nicht so angesehen sind irgendwie, aber dennoch sehr wichtig und, und ich finde eigentlich so, 
um, um wirklich selbstständig zu sein auch irgendwie, ist es vielleicht wichtig, dass Kinder sowas beigebracht bekommen. Wie, wie kann ich mein eigenes Essen anbauen und, und wie kann ich mir mein eigenes Haus bauen? Irgendwie. Mehr braucht man ja erstmal auf, auf der physischen Ebene irgendwie nicht. Und das würde schon eine Menge Freiheit geben auch irgendwie. Und ja, ich habe wie gesagt die Projekte gemacht in Frankreich und äh, hauptsächlich jetzt hier in Spanien. Jetzt haben wir schon äh, November. Hier hinter mir die Straße von Gibraltar auf der anderen Seite, Marokko, Afrika. Und wie gesagt, ich habe Leute interviewt und die Besitzer oder Gründer oder auch Volontäre, um zu erfahren, was ist deren Motivation, was haben sie hier kreiert oder warum, warum nehmen sie jetzt hier teil, was, warum volontieren sie hier, warum arbeiten sie hier freiwillig und, und wollte das ganz gern teilen und darum dreht sich auch der Film irgendwie, um, um zu sehen, ist es möglich, ein Leben anders zu gestalten, weil oft hat man ja nicht so den Glauben daran, dass es anders geht. Und das sollen die nächsten Minuten ein bisschen zeigen. Viel Spaß dabei.
So Thibaut, um, I was wondering if you maybe can talk a bit or share a bit about um, your vision about this place. What what are your intentions? Maybe, yeah, just just some of your ideas what you want to create here, probably. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> First of all, thank you for yeah for for coming here and for sharing a month together. Oh. And, um, and to discover Oikos. So Oikos is, uh, is a very modest place that was created through the, through the gathering and the, 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 um, the learning of how uh, we could try to live in, uh, more in harmony with this nature and uh, also together with the friends on this mm -hmm. planet. So um, the initial idea was yeah, to have a, a place which is no honor place where we can develop ourselves, learning, practicing, uh, let's say, uh, an agriculture of food uh, in a way which is more sustainable than the one that is uh, existing on this planet. There are many, many, many places where it's already happening and uh, the idea of Oikos is that it can happen also here. So... So yeah, three years ago, I arrived by fortune, by good fortune, in this uh, in this beautiful environment, and uh, for me it was time to to settle down after two years of cycling mm -hmm. uh, from Belgium to Turkey, and Turkey after having met uh, different condition of agriculture, but also about uh, friends who were in the needed to farm to find and to farm more autonomous place. I was thinking, okay, let's. Let's settle down. So I discovered this beautiful place, and and uh, and I wanted to to establish a, a place where we can resource ourselves, learn, share, share, and uh, and find the oikos. Oikos is a, is a word who was already invented a long time ago. For example, by Aristotle, who was mm -hmm. telling about the oikos. It means the house, but in particular or more general in more general i would say the house where all the interaction occur and planet earth is our house so what is oikos it's a small place here but it's all the planet and we can apply the model all over the world yeah and um, you told me uh, that you also want to create a place for learning and to have workshops up there huh? Yeah, so the initially uh, i was not planning to to create this place but to join collective that were already existing where you have lands and where I can provide my energy my time and uh, some of the money I had uh, in order to create a, to help to develop the place that was already existing but for my project in particular I really want to to share into a place which first of all respect the value of life mm -hmm. so I am vegan I'm not eating any animal products because I think animals have the right to live like we have I want this world to be in peace, happy and uh, and free. So I tried to find a place who was vegan first. So I found initially a, a collective where people were vegan and practicing agriculture. And I wanted there that we are able to effectively create workshop, but also uh, host animal suffering and human suffering so that they can develop themselves in, in peace and harmony. I did not finally uh, encounter this condition with people I, I met, so I decided to establish here. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is really like, yes, practicing autonomy, uh, developing uh, buildings, how we can build things, trying to use uh, less concrete as possible to try to practice ecological uh, building. Also taking care of uh, the environment by uh, not uh, invading it too much, so letting it be and showing us what's the way to. And at last, of course, to, to host animals and, and men that, and women, of course, that, that want to, to come here and, and discover how we can create autonomy. So for three years now, it's running on uh, step by step, of course, because mm -hmm. the building took a long time to be created and the workshop area too. And uh, of course, to learn, uh, to study agriculture is one thing. That's my background. But uh, to, to put it in practice and to be sure to provide food for all the residents here is another challenge. So this year, I think it will be better than last year. It was already before from the year before. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy of what's going on. So the ideas um, of um, 
how and what you want to create here. Uh, so I I reckon you you um, discovered through your journey while cycling, meeting meeting other people, other other communities, and then you had your ideas. And how how did it develop that you you came to these ideas to to create this place here? Hmm. Maybe not so easy to answer. But yeah, it's a very wide question. Probably it begins already once I was maybe eight or nine years old. Yeah. There was a, a famous uh, television program uh, in, in the French television. That's funny because in Belgium, once we speak French, you look mostly uh, French television. So there was this uh, this TV program was called Ushuaia Nature, and uh, it's uh, it's the current uh, um, minister of environment uh, who created that uh, that mm. t TV uh, program. He was not politics at all. He refused a long time to be part of the politics. Now he is. And that guy was traveling all over the world, seeing, showing beautiful pictures like, uh, like you can see at the BBC program about nature. But on the same time, he was always present and with scientists to try to explain what we observe, but on the same time, what was the challenge and the problem the, the country face, uh, the, 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 the planet Earth face. And yeah, so it's like... Uh, n nearly 30 years ago that this TV program uh, began and uh, and they already speak about this uh, deforestation of uh, Amazonian forest uh, speaking about this two uh, one one football uh, area who's destroyed every second and that uh, th that duality between the beauty of the nature and this destruction uh, that human being can induce probably affect me a lot and that's probably why I came through a path of studying biology, then agronomy, and traveling, and 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 meeting, and 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 always uh, being uh, interested into the nature, uh, on one hand by its beauty, of course, but on the same time to try how can we save this planet because it's uh, yeah it's so beautiful why we we should not use our brain to to make to live in harmony with it. Harmony is a big word. I'm not uh, believing into harmony. I trust in harmony. I experience it. I really live with. Uh, I try uh, at least to be more harmonious uh, with with every beings that surrounding me, and uh, and yeah, the, this is my my path. So how this ID came? It's an ID like many others share. It's just an ID, a canal, and and I want to now put an intention to to create such a world. Okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Thank you too. Petit barbier, les petits pots de clair, les petits pots de clair, ma 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 ma, oh yeah, les petits pots de clair, oh yeah, les petits pots de clair, les petits pots, les petits pots.
Okay, um, Ludwig, I wanted to ask you um, what you want to create here in this place, and yeah, what what's your vision about this? What what do you want to create here, and probably like. Um, what do you have in mind how, how to achieve it y your goals that you have and may maybe uh, at the end wh what's your motivation of, of, of creating this yeah. okay so this is what I called uh, park of learning in permaculture so it uh, wish to be a place a collective place where people can learn and share about what uh, is human being and the the final aim of this place is to investigate how to go beyond suffering for this we divide the place in two aspects the active or survival aspect so everything which has to to do with uh, sustainability for building or, or electricity all kind of needs of the human being because I guess this is the first part to achieve uh, happiness, like to really cover your needs. And then the second part of the project or the, the other part of the project is, um, let's call it the spiritual part or human part or existential part, which is uh, everything that doesn't happen pragmatically, but all the research that every individual is doing in life. Mm -hmm and uh, then the idea is that it's completely free and without any ideology or relig religion but th that the people can be religious or have their own ideology only respecting others and with the wish to share with others how to do it the motivation comes from the fact that uh, i found myself in this world suffering very much in my early early years of my life let's say and I discovered that there are many ways to find happiness in ourselves and that there are very very few places where you can achieve this without pressure oppression or like direction guides but yeah because as is something that I guess we all share as humans we just have to look together how to do it and then the way I want to achieve this project is uh, basically sharing with the people that is participating in. So it's going always in this horizon that I told about, but the re direction, the pragmatic direction that it will take will depend really on the needs of the people that are coming and on their apportations. So yes, that's, that's what's my project.
Ja, also ich habe in Deutschland, ich war selbstständig gewesen und irgendwann habe ich gedacht, war es das jetzt? Also äh, ich, ich hatte alles in Deutschland, wunderschönes Haus und äh, eine Firma, die gut funktionierte, aber ich, ich war irgendwie nicht glücklich. Und ähm, mein damaliger Partner hatte auch das Bedürfnis nach einer Veränderung und mein Sohn sowieso. Und ähm, ich hatte Freunde hier, die auch eine Finca gekauft hatten und so hatten wir die Möglichkeit, ja nicht ganz alleine jetzt herzukommen, sondern schon einen gewissen Anschluss an eine Gemeinschaft zu haben. Aber die Finca, die habe ich dann zunächst mit meiner Familie bzw. mit meinem Partner allein bewohnt. Mhm. Und ähm, ja, ich, ich wollte einfach mehr in der Natur sein und wirklich für mich oder für mein Wohlbefinden arbeiten und nicht irgendwas produzieren und ich habe zwar Naturwaren, äh, Dinkelspreu, Bettwaren produziert, also auch was ich empfunden habe, ist wichtig für die Leute, aber ähm, so dieses Selbstversorger, dass man autark ist, das hat mich total angemacht. Ich bin äh, per Zufall hier in Torre de Mar äh, am Schaufenster von einem Makler gestanden und da stand das das, äh, das, das Wort Früchteparadies und das hat mich so reingezogen äh, in den, in den, zu dem Makler und allein dies, diese, diese Vision, ähm, mich selbst ernähren zu können mit meinen eigenen Früchten, das war für mich also was ganz Besonderes. Ne? Obwohl ich überhaupt keine Ahnung hatte. Ich bin Ex äh, Exportkauffrau und ähm, habe eben eher eine betriebswirtschaftliche Ausbildung. Aber ich habe mir in den 17 Jahren, wo ich jetzt hier bin, alles vom Bäume schneiden und äh, alles selbst angeeignet, Bewässerung äh, machen und äh, ja, von der Ernte oder von Gemüsegarten war auch neu für mich. Aber das habe ich mir alles äh, einfach angeeignet, weil es mir Spaß gemacht hat. Ne? Also ich möchte auch, ich möchte auch nicht nach Deutschland wieder zurückgehen, das kann ich mir nicht mehr vorstellen. Mhm. Ich bin eigentlich sehr verwöhnt, weil es hier auch im, im Winter warm genug ist. Äh, Im Dezember fängt die Avocado-Saison an, also da ist es ist eigentlich, es ist nicht so wie in Deutschland, dass dann da nichts mehr wächst, sondern gerade im Frühjahr, im Herbst und im Winter sind die, die Hauptzeiten, wo man auch im Gemüsegarten was anbauen kann. Der Sommer ist eher so die Ruhezeit, bis es dann wieder im September mit der Mango-Saison voll anfängt, das ist immer die Stresszeit. Die stressigste Zeit ist die Mangozeit, weil äh, die müssen halt jeden Tag zweimal geerntet werden, dass die nicht überreif sind. Und bei den Avocados ist es was ganz anderes. Ab Dezember bis März, äh, die werden nicht am Baum reif. Also die fallen nicht runter. Es sei denn, man lässt sie bis den nächsten September hängen. Dann werden sie irgendwann von der Hitze runterfallen. Aber die Avocado ist der absolute, das ist sowas Spezielles, weil es die Frucht am Baum hält, bis man sie abnimmt. Und erst dann fängt sie an zu reifen. Und äh, das ist der beste Kühlschrank. Also <lacht> meine Avocado-Bäume. Ich habe jetzt im August immer noch Avocados äh, auf den Bäumen hängen. Ähm, der Baum trägt dann natürlich, also im März ist die Blüte, mhm. wenn man die vom alten Jahr hängen lässt, dann trägt er nicht oder nur ganz äh, minimal wieder, also so dass man praktisch ein Jahr dann aussetzt. Aber mir ist es wichtiger, das ganze Jahr oder Großteil des Jahres Avocados zu haben für, für meinen Bedarf oder den Bedarf meiner Working Guests oder Gäste. Okay. Dankeschön. Gern geschehen.
Okay, Kate. Um, um, let me know um, something about this place. Um, what what have you created here, and what wh what does it mean for you? This this place here, La Bua Verde. Um, well, first of all, I haven't created it. It's kind of created itself, and lots of other people have created it. So it's really nothing. I'm 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 the person that's been here all the time. From when it started till now, which is about 21, 22 years almost. But there's been so many people coming and bringing their knowledge and their enthusiasm and sometimes skills, sometimes not skills, but you know their will willingness to cooperate and collaborate. So it's it's not just me, um, and. It's kind of just evolved in a kind of just a sort of quite organic kind of way. It wasn't like I had a master plan and I arrived and I was like, right, I'm going to do this and this and this. Um, it's just sort of grown. Um, obviously, with like a basis of some ideas and values, values more than ideas, really, just, you know, things that I care about things that I'm passionate about, things that um, that I enjoy doing. Hmm. Um, so so what, what is it? What is it? Well, um, it's a kind of slightly crazy, chaotic, um, bit scruffy project with lots of people coming to participate. And it's the basis of it is living on the land as much off the land as possible um, in as, as sustainable way as possible, being as self-sufficient as possible um, and trying within that trying to be fulfilled as people and creative and sharing each other's company, enjoying each other's company, respecting each other, um, getting along with people even if they're not necessarily who you might choose to be friends with it's mm -hmm. also part of it um and yeah wanting to create something together um a lot of it's quite hard work a lot of it's quite hard physical work but that's not necessarily a bad thing it's sometimes good and sometimes it can be a bit boring with doing repetitive things but we try and mix it up and do different things as because we do so many different things growing food looking after animals keeping animals <laughs> under control when they try to escape building houses maintaining houses building other structures electricity solar electrics solar hot water building our own solar hot water systems, maintaining all these infrastructures that we've created. Um, there's a lot of variation of what we do because the nature of being self as self-sufficient as possible means you have to do everything. So, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it can be fun. It can be a bit cold it can be a bit hot you can get stung by things you can get annoyed by wild boar getting into the garden and destroying it you can get annoyed by the donkeys escaping um but the general philosophy is that is to be as walk as lightly on the earth as possible and feel fulfilled as people and not just be part of a kind of crazy system really which is not really working very well um obviously it's not paradise and we don't we're not as self-sufficient as i would like us to be but when you actually come to do it you realize how how much work it is basically um and now you realize why people like not that long ago in the local village because this area is you know the south of spain until fairly recently everybody used to grow their own food everybody used to 
had their own animals. Everybody used to have a piece of land. Would probably build their own houses as well. So, you know, those people, they used to work from dawn to dusk. And we don't. We try and have some free time, not just be working the whole time, which we could be because there's lots of mm. possibility for it. We could be working 16 hours a day. When I first came here, that was what I did because I just wanted to get something done and because I didn't have any, any other distractions or any relationships or any friends to distract me, so I just did it. But And that was a time of my life when it was fine. But we try and have a balance between work and not work, um, even though the work should be enjoyable um, and fulfilling. So... Yeah, so, you know, we I buy in a lot of food. I buy in a lot of grains and cereals. And we grow nearly all our own veg and nearly all our own fruit. Um, we have chickens. We eat our own eggs. We make our own olive oil. And we have some other things, almonds and olives. So, you know, but... We don't want to be slaves to a lifestyle. Although it's kind of what I believe. But on the other hand, you know, you've got to be realistic. We're asking people to come here and volunteer. I don't want to exploit people. So we don't want to have them working all day long. Although, you know, there's opportunity for it. So, um, you know, and we try to, we try to provide an example of what can be done. Real, realistically we could do more in terms of self-sufficiency but that would mean people working a lot longer hours mm. and also the land you know it's not particularly fertile it's not land to grow cereals on I mean I probably buy over the period of a year I think I probably buy about um, 12 at least 12 sacks of flour so that's mm. uh, twelve. Digits. So that's over three hundred kilos of flour, for instance. Just because we normally make a loaf, and didn't make it today, but have a loaf of bread every day, and we use it for other cooking. So you know, there's no way this farm could grow that amount of cereals. It's just not possible. It's mainly olive trees. So you know, we're also realistic. We make more olive oil usually than we can consume. So we sell some of that and then we buy in other products. But, um, yeah, and it's also about people being able to explore possibilities and learn skills and, yeah, you know, build, mm. be part of building a house, which they probably never get that mm. experience, that opportunity to do anywhere else, be mainly because of legislation and... <laughs> lack of space and but you know here luckily we have the freedom to be able to experiment and do different green building projects and stuff which is fun um yeah so that's kind of what it's evolved into being um thanks also to a lot of people that have put in a lot of energy and a lot of people that come back on a regular basis and have helped out and have got skills and yeah and you know it kind of keeps going. Vale, Julia, cuéntame tu vida aquí en uh, La Buga Verde. Bueno, yo llegué aquí hace tres años. 
y después de hacer un máster en antropología médica y llegué aquí para conectar con la naturaleza de una forma muy profunda, ¿no? Y una amiga me habló de este sitio, entonces yo escribí a Kate y le pregunté y estuve aquí tres meses. Y en estos tres meses me enamoré de este sitio, de los sonidos, de las luces, de la forma de, de vivir con la naturaleza, ¿no? Tan, tan cerca, ¿no? Y de cuidar la naturaleza y no sentir la naturaleza como una como algo extraño a mí, sino algo que yo misma soy, yo misma soy naturaleza. Entonces, uh -huh. trabajar con la naturaleza aquí me ha abierto como un mundo, como una nueva puerta, como algo en mí se ha abierto, mi corazón se ha abierto. Entonces, después de estos tres meses, yo me fui a viajar, a seguir con mi vida, pero después de tres años, hace nueve meses, yo he vuelto aquí para quedarme una temporada muy larga porque he sentido en este sitio como una conexión muy potente, ¿no? Uh -huh. Con todos los elementos de la naturaleza, con el agua, con el fuego, con el sol, con la tierra, con las rocas y, y con, también con las relaciones con las personas. Aquí las relaciones con las personas son muy cercanas muy de, de contacto, de amor, de cariño, de comprensión y a la vez también vivir en un entorno como este que se puede denominar como una, como una vida en comunidad pero donde mm. tienes tus espacios propios también entonces hay esta dinámica y esta complementariedad entre el tener tu tiempo para desarrollar tu creatividad Uh -huh. eh, con la naturaleza también y para desarrollar cosas que quizá en la ciudad no puedes desarrollar, uh -huh. ¿no? Porque aquí tienes el tiempo y tienes las herramientas, la madera, la piedra, y la tierra, las hojas, las flores, tiene todos los elementos que te dan la posibilidad de expresar tu creatividad, ¿no? Y tu pasión hacia la vida. Yo aquí como he vuelto a renacer, ¿no? Y también las relaciones con la gente es como son tan cercanas. Cada persona que viene aquí puede ser una, inspir una inspiración muy grande, uh -huh. ¿no? Porque, bueno, yo en mi vida me he dedicado mucho a estudiar antropología y las culturas humanas, pero también me he dedicado a la danza y amo, la, y amo el arte, ¿no? Entonces parece que aquí uno está metido en un valle y que no hay nada, que no hay arte, que no hay cultura, que hay simplemente campo y cultivar y los animales, pero no hay mucho más. Y entonces la gente de aquí, que viene aquí, es un entorno sano de armonía y se abre uh -huh. y se inspira. Entonces las relaciones se vuelven muy cercanas. Uh -huh. Entonces, por ejemplo, la diferencia que puede haber entre vivir en ciudad y vivir en un entorno así es primero te puede expresar de una forma que la ciudad no te permite porque la ciudad está hecha y diseñada para que tú tengas límites aquí no tienes límites bueno el límite es el respeto de lo demás y respeto de la naturaleza respeto del agua respeto de la tierra pero luego tú te vuelves como oh, una parte de esta misma naturaleza. En la ciudad la naturaleza es algo como extraño a ti, algo que tú tienes que dominar para vivir. Aquí no, aquí tienes que abrazar la naturaleza muy fuerte. Y um, bueno, estudiando antropología médica me he dedicado mucho a investigar sobre culturas indígenas y cómo se curan los indígenas. Entonces empecé a desarrollar como una pasión muy grande para las plantas medicinales. Y entonces uno de mi propósito aquí es cultivar siempre más plantas medicinales y hacer aceites, cremas, jabones. Y entonces como mmm, tener aquí un sitio para, sí, para crear cosas que estén en sintonía con, conmigo, ¿no? Y en la ciudad o en otros contextos muy difícilmente he encontrado mm -hmm. esta armonía, ¿no? Y qué más. Aquí todo es muy intenso. 
Es como... En la ciudad estás como focalizado en, en cosas que te distraen de, de tú mismo. Aquí estás presente y tiene que estar presente. Y a veces estar presente es muy difícil porque estás contigo mismo y, y con tu historia de vida, ¿no? Y entonces aquí tienes que estar, vivir el momento y hacer de este momento como lo más bello realmente, ¿no? A veces, a veces ha sido difícil porque es como una burbuja, a bubble, ¿no? Y cuando sales uh -huh. ves un mundo duro aquí. Uh -huh. aquí. Aquí es duro de otra forma, hay mucho trabajo físico. Yo me siento muy empoderada como mujer porque aquí puedo, o sea, me, me puedo abrir a hacer cualquier tipo de trabajo, bajar, subir cosas coger pesos y me siento como muy fuerte, o sea, en el cuerpo me siento muy fuerte, pero también en mí, conmigo misma he empezado a tener como mucha firmeza, como fuerza, mucha fuerza, ¿no? Y también vivir en este entorno tienes que estar siempre preparado al cambio. Cuando estás cultivando fruta, verdura, lo que sea, nunca sabes cómo va a terminar, entonces no hay control. Y tienes que estar consciente que no puedes controlar todo, sino que todo está constantemente moviéndose, constantemente en cambio. No, no hay control, no puede haber control. Hay que dejar fluir, sea como sea, ¿no? Por ejemplo, este año hemos intentado plantar muchos tomates y tener un montón de tomate, pero al final no tenemos tantos tomates. Entonces, ¿qué hay que hacer? Nada. Tendremos otras cosas, ¿no? Y también la forma de aprender aquí es muy interesante para mí porque yo he estudiado muchos años en la universidad como cuatro, cinco, seis, como siete años en la universidad entre, un, entre pues el máster y la, mi primera formación universitaria, pero lo que yo aprendo aquí a través del conocimiento empírico de hacer las cosas con las manos, de ensuciarme las manos, no, no tiene comparación con un conocimiento que pueda ve, venir de un libro. Aquí es experiencia mm -hmm. que se hace cuerpo. Mm -hmm. Like... Embodied experience. Y no es como alguien ha dicho, alguien ha escrito. No, aquí es de tu experiencia que la haces conocimiento. Y esto para mí es como una de las partes más importantes de mi proceso aquí. Chloe and Dave, um, I wanted to ask you um, about how how is your life here and why did you choose to have a life like here, like a more rural kind of lifestyle, working in the garden, making construction and maybe you can talk about also what kind of work you do or what you like to do here. Maybe. Who wants to start? I'll start. Um, so why do I live here? Well I sort of grew up in the country anyway so I've always been outside all my life doing things in the woods and in nature 
um, and I studied conservation at university or countryside management so I really after uni I like did a bit of work doing like woodland management and working for wildlife charities and then a little bit of work building and then I came traveling and started going to these projects and like they basically just combine everything that I like doing you know it's like outdoors with nature it's building it's you know looking after the land um, and it's just like in the most beautiful spot so I just ended up staying here really and now I, yeah I'm happy here it's got everything I need it's um, it's full of healthy distractions I find rather than unhealthy distractions because mm -hmm. I think if I live in a city then I just become a bit of a like don't really do anything productive with my time um, whereas here you sort of just end up being productive because that's what there is to do so it's yeah it's good yeah I think very similar reasons and that that sense of the richness of time here that you really kind of have to find ways to live creatively, which is something that I see everyone here doing. We have a really good balance between working and free time, and most people find really interesting ways to use the time and to feel the land is a place that just gives so much, not just that it feeds us and is a place for us to live, but also the amount of resources that it has. Um, I feel like living here in this kind of lifestyle and also together with the group of people. It's all about creating moments and creating things. <clears throat> so there's so much kind of sharing of knowledge and skills and there'll be different, always people doing different things and making things out of wood or making things out of clay that we take out from the Athekias. And, mm, and also the element for me, the, my working element is to be in the gardens and to grow the food for everyone, which is definitely quite an ideological decision for me because it's incredibly empowering to be able to do that and not something that many people can if you're landless and you don't have the option to do that and it's incredible to be able to go to the gardens every day and to just pick your food and prepare it and um, yeah not to ever really have to go into a supermarket no like that's a complete luxury um, and yeah, and the way that cooking becomes creative then as well because you just have all of the ingredients in front of you. Mm. Yeah, for me, the, the biggest reason, for me, it was less of a, f a, fluid, uh, a fluid journey to getting to live here. Like I was at university in the city and it was definitely more of a radical change to come and, and live rurally and the best decision I've ever made. Um, for me personally, like the city is, it can offer so much, but it reached a point where it just became stifling and didn't feel like a place where, that brought out the best in me definitely. And I found it quite stifling. And since being here, everything just is at a different rhythm and we're so busy, there's always so much to do, but it's very much here and you're present and you're living on the farm, you're working here, your friends, your f family, it becomes, it does become a very kind of holistic experience and it means that you can be very present in everything you do and dedicated and yeah always finding new things to do here um, so for me it's definitely been a way to find a real richness in life again mm. So I think really importantly at the heart of everything we do here is is the idea of living in a sustainable way, in a way that's not harmful to the environment um, as you are, you're obliged to live in that way when you live in a city, you know, that everything you do you're tied into the system which is really high on energy which is not sustainable and so we're trying to lead an alternative lifestyle which means that we don't have to do that and we have the choice not to do that. So all of the energy here is solar powered, all of our electricity comes from solar panels and the cook we have solar cookers. Um, we don't waste water, we have compost toilets and then all of the, everything that 
compost down then goes back into the land onto the trees to help the trees to grow um, we have animals and then we make compost from the animal manure and that goes into the garden so it's this constant everything going back into the land you know, trying to close the cycle and not produce loads of waste and um, yeah and that's really crucial to what we're doing and in the gardens producing food in an organic way so we're not using any chemicals no pesticides um, with a huge emphasis on caring for the soil unlike in industrial industrial agriculture which is constantly taking nutrients from out of the soil destroying the topsoil and using chemicals which are harmful to the land um, and so here it's all about care rather than focusing just on productivity and how much we produce it's it's really about looking after things well in a way that we're not degrading anything and we can continue to live in this way and the people who come here in the future will be able to continue to live in this way um, and I think often this notion of, of going rural or living in this way is really associated with sacrifice and yes in some ways you have to sacrifice modern conveniences or the cultural opportunities perhaps that a city can afford and there will always have to be some combination of those two things no but I think it's important to realize that you can still it's not about sacrifice and frugality like I've never lived in a, a way that I have felt so rich in experience and the company of others and you create your own culture with all of the people who are here and and you're eating so well and you know exactly where your food comes from and in some ways it's simpler but at the same time so much fuller perhaps than a life at least for me the life that I was living in the city. I think this project in particular is so good because it's a big project and because it requires a lot of people to help it run effectively it becomes such a great place for learning because you have so many volunteers who come and everyone brings something different or everyone some people come with no experience and they learn so much through being here and like it's just a great example of proving to people that you can live simply in a low impact way and still have a great time in a great place and just like pass on so much knowledge and wisdom to people from all over the world and uh, I think it's just a really effective way of doing it and so yeah I think it works well.
Okay, Francesco, we are here on this workaway project, um, being in this wonderful nature, working five hours a day, creating a forest garden. And um, my my question would be, um, how did it came that 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 you came here? What what were your intentions? Why are you here? <laughs> okay, Jorna, I'm here because uh, I'm trying to experience something different in my life. So um, I like the open air life. I like the agriculture. I like the permaculture. I like uh, the countryside. So for me, it's important to experience this and uh, to try a mm, different way of living. And uh, I found uh, this uh, workaway project, and I, th I guess that is a, a good way for traveling um, with not so many uh, money. So. Um, for me is a good way because you can uh, meet other people uh, join the project and meet the hosts and learn every day something new and uh, you can uh, also um, be in this uh, wonderful place the first evening we were here we were we, we was we were looking uh, uh, the sunset and we said that uh, it's not necessary to be rich with the big money for being in a beautiful place like this in a wonderful house and look uh, an amazing show like uh, this sunset so I think uh, that there are many ways uh, cheaper very cheaper to do this and um, you think like doing these kind of things has an impact on your life like what you will do in the future like yeah of of course uh, uh, i think that when you do something like this uh, is not simple uh, to come back you know and uh, maybe get a normal uh, office job uh, with a routine life uh, for me is very difficult and uh, sometimes i need uh, to stop my normal life uh, when I feel that uh, it it become not uh, so so good for me, so I try another another way, more more natural, for uh, mm, come uh, back uh, to feel uh, my emotions, my feeling, and my contact with nature. I don't know what uh, I'm going to do in the future, but uh, I'd like. Uh, to live uh, in a different way um, maybe uh, traveling in this way sometimes or in another way I don't know but uh, mm, I don't think uh, that I uh, come back to the office or uh, uh, or maybe yes but not for a long time you know uh, probably I I come back again to at work but uh, maybe just for uh, some period for uh, to to have uh, the the chance to join other projects like this and maybe I'd like to work uh, as a nomad worker you know nomad mm -hmm. um, I'd like uh, to do that uh, um, by writing in a blog or uh, uh, freelance for uh, re uh, reviews uh, or uh, blogs uh, websites but the most important thing for me is uh, to have the time and the, the time for keep uh, in contact with the nature you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so and what do you feel what are your wishes for your life what what do you wish for your life you know for my life uh, mm, yes. I wish uh, I don't know but uh, the most important thing for, for me is uh, the feeling you know the good feeling so when I start to feel something not 
very good for me, that a situation is not f good for me, I want uh, to try to change it and uh, find another, another situation better for me and uh, I want to feel uh, free mm, in also in the situations but I realize that for me it's important nature you know when I'm next to the nature in a place like this in the countryside uh, I feel good you know and uh, these feelings is difficult for me to find uh, in the towns in the cities where uh, there is a lot of stress uh, a lot of buildings uh, and uh, uh, it's difficult uh, to connect uh, with yourself mm -hmm. sometimes it's not impossible but it's more difficult so i prefer a, a, a way more easy you know easier like this because we are nature and if we are we are into the nature is more simple is a uh, is more logic you know mm -hmm. In italiano, ciao a tutti, siamo qui per condividere questo bellissimo modo di vivere che permette alle persone di viaggiare e di condividere progetti naturali senza spendere soldi. Siamo ospitati in un bellissimo progetto da Fernando, in un posto molto ma molto bello dell'Andalusia dove regna la tranquillità, sentite gli uccellini? Qui è ancora estate, siamo a metà ottobre e il clima è molto bello, asciutto e l'estate continua. Perché fermarla? <ride> Grazie. <ride> Bitte. So mm -hmm. 